Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Making Life Brighter Radio, and I'm your host, Winifred Adams, and we have special return guest today, Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, and he is the commander in chief, and you know him as commander from these shows. We've been doing an extensive series with commander in chief Gould, and he has been sharing with us the performances that he has undertaken and performed not only across the world with other countries, but in the Vatican, the Pentagon, and of course, the Federal Serve system, which he set up. And if you don't know what those shows are about, please go back and listen to them. You can find them on the archives on the radio page at, the, at makinglifebrighter.com. You can subscribe to the series on iTunes worldwide under Winifred Adams or Making Life Brighter. You can catch us now on iHeartRadio, on Spotify. We're all over the place. And you know what? These are the number one shows. All of these shows are the number one highest ranked shows ever on Making Life Brighter's history. So there's something to this, and I invite you to come and join us in this conversation today. Welcome back, Commander Gould. Hey, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for being with us today, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to answer more questions. And today we have a special show because we have listeners' questions that we want to answer. So Right have, on, right on. <laughs> that's right. We have people that are following along, and they're actually doing their homework. They've gone to the War Castle series, and they've checked that out. They've listened to it, and they have some very pointed and intelligent questions. And I say intelligent because they're not random. They actually have done research, and I think they're very deep questions that we want to get into today. So first of all, how are you? Doing wonderful. Wonderful day here. <laughs> uh, just blessed to be moving down, down this journey called life. Very thankful, very humble, and it's, a, it's an honor to, to, answer, to correspond with the questions that you that, you, that the audience has generated for me. So thank well, you very much for your questions. Absolutely. And, you know, a special shout out to everybody that's listening in the world and blessings to everyone, including all the militaries of the world that uh, I can see kind of tuning in to this show. And I say that because the world, world stage is just that, but we all still have one heart and hopefully we can make it beat together one day. And maybe we can make it be together under a system like yours, Russell. Well, we are one. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> well, let's just jump right in and talk a little bit about some of the things that we could use clarity on, we the listeners. And I'll put myself in that category because I'm always and forever learning from you and from this series. It, it begets and begs contemplation, which is why I'm even doing this. I think it's so important for people to kind of question what is what they think is normal and look at somebody else and and you know basically consider another concept or idea that may benefit them so first of all let's talk about what why your system would benefit the people what are the top three things that your system would do for the people of the world not just america <laughs> well number one it gives freedom and accountability to the thinking behind the behind the person so it gives a lot more freedom um, and it also gives a lot more accountability so people have to be accountable for their actions one to another so it's really cool if you're a righteous and really honorable person and, and truthful with yourself and then with others my system is very wonderful to use and how would someone use your system to benefit maybe doing business with someone else? What would it do for them? Well, number one, it would give transparency and full closure in contracts. So you would know the terms of the duties that one must uh, comply with or join with as you convey your services between parties. How is that not happening already in contracts that are being done today? Contracts that are done today are done under subjective interpretation, where they're using adjectives and pronouns, creating fictitious, fraudulent locations, creating verbs in space, which don't exist. So there's no now space culpability for a service. Now, that's based on the fact that someone agrees with your grammar interpretation or system. Now, if they were just living along doing their contracts and life was okay for them, why would they see the need to change? 
Well, system. it depends on if they want to go with the status quo of being broke. My system takes the yoke of finances off of the people. So the, the main players that are behind the finances really don't want my system to come forward because what this means is no one ever has a mortgage again. You can actually have now space custody of the usury of your homes, your lands, your, your things. So the powers to be want that always up so that when from cradle to grave, they can stick it in your probate estate so they can litigate it on it and direct where your wealth goes to. And how is it that you've really, how could you rather implement this system with such a broad, intricate system as it is today? How would you be able to do that? Because if you went ahead and said, okay, every, everybody in this country doesn't have a mortgage anymore. What about all the people that buy and sell mortgages and their jobs and their families and all the people that are involved in those systems, maybe not the fraudulent ones that you're speaking of or those that want to control, but rather just everyday whomever that has a job in that. Yes, you do have to create new space. And that's where the downsizing of the government now allows the private sector to create growth. So you have an actual uh, growth in your gross national product. And those people that are in those current jobs now can use it, move into the private sector as you downsize the government because the people become accountable for what they do. You don't need so many uh, red tape um, concepts in the way of pro uh, of uh, of material gains or manufacturing gains uh, for for our society. And what's another, what's a third component to your system that people would benefit from? That's one, that's two of them, but what what's one more that the the people could take away and say, wow, that, that oh, well, would really help? Well, the, 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 a, a very valuable thing is since the IRS was kicked out of the United States in 1999, the taxes will no longer, they'll no longer have to have the headache of filing for taxes each year because there's a consumption tax at 10%, not on what you make, but on what you purchase. And so the 10% now gets delegated back down through the downsized government to support them to build the infrastructure for the people. Because please keep in mind, Winifred, in our audience, governments are because we, the people, authorize. And so you are, but you are your own sovereign and government, technically. I have created a governmental system worldwide as a foreign government on grammar, disqualifying the construct of fictitious grammar on planet Earth. So that would involve all the current government systems that are still playing in the world as we know it today, including the political systems, the debates, the banking, et cetera. Yeah, all the, all the geopolitics, and we call that the, the Ken and Barbie fake show. So, <laughs> we, so we don't actually tune into that. We, put the, we bring the accountability back to the people using the grammar from one style of language to the other style of language. We lose no devi deviation in our sentence structure. So you have a harmony of compliance for closure between nations, between people, between, between cultures. Have you ever felt that this could truly come to pass and switch over and be an active system in your lifetime? Well, absolutely. But there's several things that have to happen. It's far beyond the grammar. There's also what we take into our, into our intake or what we take in from our food source to our water source. All this has to be cleaned up simultaneously to create the harmony of, of the intelligence levels because unfortunately, because of the, the GMO foods and the things that we, are sub that, that we get forced upon us, there's actually no growth in our cellular structure so we don't actually know how to detox. And so detoxing the negative cellular stored up energies within us is all part of that, yes. We have so many questions for you today, and I'm so glad you're here again because there are so many things that have come down the pike since we last spoke, and people are writing to me. And one of the questions that Beverly from Washington asks, she wants to know if you have your own dictionary for the I grammar. Do. 
I, I do. I have, I have several forms. I have one for uh, the day-to-day -day contract. I have some for, for navigating into foreign courts. I have wow. some for customs policies, tariffs. I have some for policies that governments and consular stations can interact with. I have some for scientific and periodics. I, because I disqualified at the time, I had a surgeon hyphen general. We disqualified the World Health Organization and the CDC's authorization to exist as corporations to subject vaccines against we the people. So all of that has been built in and there's different dictionaries basing on the needs of the people, Beverly. Wow, thank you for that. Thank you for that. So she had also additionally asked that um, David hyphen Colin Miller, when you two worked together, apparently he had a dictionary. Is his now null and void? or is that still in use or did you create your own outside of that and would your dictionary be used in everyday conversation and become a normalized way of speaking or would it just be for contracts two questions well here's the unique thing each party that's engaged in contract with the other contracting party has the function to create the range and domain for their own dictionary from one to another, as long as each parties concur with the terms of the, of the contract. So we would have to look at the concepts of uh, was the rules of the continuance of the evidence maintained as a formulated concept of thought to put on cargo as paperwork, on your paperwork as cargo. And so Beverly, different needs and different venues have different, um, policies and so i'm not quite sure where she's at with that and i would have to specifically sit down and look at the chain of the chain of the continuance of evidence on that thank you for that and so then would this become normalized is there a standardization of this type of sure. grammar that would be spoken back That's, and forth among the people or is it just on paper well you well as you know oral argument is no good because two plus two can't equal four what I mean by that, Beverly, is if you ask yourself the question, does two plus two equal four, in oral, in dialogue, does T-O plus T-W-O equal F-O-R-E? Does T-O-O -O plus T-O equal F-O-U-R? Point being, so it is written, so shall it be. So you have to look at the functions of how it's written, how the contract was brought into port or location at the time of, of the contract. We were discussing in the last segment about whether or not the Parse Syntax grammar was just for contracts or if it would be a spoken language as well. And you were saying it needs to be translated onto a written word so that people can see exactly what the intention is by the word. The, the volition, yeah, the, the volition of the thought. And, you know, some nations, the words aren't the same. And so there's a whole growth for translators that can be brought in and correct communication part say syntax grammar and as a translator now you would have to have the capacity to the syntax comprehend the parse of that language and then bring it back into correct communication part say syntax grammar with the math interface so this would be an entirely new uh, career path for many people and young people that are up and coming that could learn this and then actually begin to help others integrate this system into their daily world Yes, yes. And, 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 and as, a tr so you're, as you go from foreign port to foreign port, otherwise known as the courtrooms, if you don't comprehend the grammar, you have the right of a translator. And the same thing would hold true here. You'd have a translator who would, would have the knowledge and comprehension on how to use the grammar in a function that they can correlate and help the citizens. And there's a whole, there's a whole section of, of, of the correct grammar world that, uh, is that there's plenty of job positions there available for people. That would be so much fun. I think that's amazing. That would be great. So yeah. eventually we'd be speaking in this grammar one day. If, if you chose to, yes, because you're moving the condition of thinking all into compliance with your contract. And I've done this many times in the courtrooms. And the federal government and the federal judicial system, when I move into those concepts, they tell everybody in the courtroom that I'm engaged in quantum speak. So they're very cognizant. I've been doing this a long time. They're very aware of that. How would someone in music make music like that? Because the grammar begins to like chop it up and kind of cut it up. Whereas 
you know, a poem or music is, is not even always a logical contiguous thought. It is sometimes um, a flow of vowel sounds or things, and that's the understanding. How would that work? Well, you'd have to break down the, the musical ciphers and look at the seven arbitrary forms of communication. Oh, say it again, because you broke up a little bit. Ciphering. You would have to implement the seven arbitrary forms of ciphering simultaneously with your music cipher to implement the harmony of your harmonics of what you're trying to, the message that you're trying to convey. Dealing with the, uh, the functions, because I was doing uh, studies on Sumer and the Anunnaki, and some of the original text were in har harmonics. And so I, um, I implemented that in quantum grammar. Well, upcoming in December, we're going to have a special guest on the, the lady that is using the harmonics to speak with the Pleiadians, Pleiadians, if you want to call it that. And sure. they, they are downloading harmonics onto her with certain sounds for the opening of um, some of people's heart chakras and heart centers so that they can begin the transformation in, in here again. And that's beautiful. I, I hope we can bring forward more of that conversation in the future with you, but I need to kind of stay on track for what we're going to do here today because that's the fun stuff. What we're talking about is a little more of the technical difficulty of the vastness of what you have implemented and created. And it is a vastness. You really took on, you undertook every single system on planet earth and revised it. Yeah, put it into a now space contest to create a now space performance for the people. And I can't say revised. The, you, yeah, you, it, it all it all benefits. The, I, I put a construct as first architect, so the narrative is a, is a performance for the people. So as the people engage in, or not engage, but as people commune with the benefits of the correct communication parsing and text grammar, it gives them the freedom they have to be autonomous and control their own lives. Because I don't want to control anybody. I want everybody to be able to control themselves. Do you think they really could act in accordance to that? Do you think people that have a corrupt mind would come forward and be at ease no, to, to have no, a better performance? That's the beauty. The people with a corrupt mind get to go to jail. That's the beauty of, the, <laughs> that's the beauty of this thing. That's the whole beauty. That's why I did this. So the people that are corrupt don't have to be around anymore. It's because, the beauty. Because their What's performance would, would... They're just going to go to jail. What does that do for the people? It frees the people from that negative thought that has us suppressed. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. See, for the corrupt, no, you're not going to like my system. You're going to go to jail. And so... Let me ask you this. The, this is going to put the onus back on the individual for proper performance. That's the bottom line. Is that you are, you are begging people to, you're not physically begging, but this begs the people to step up or step away. Be accountable for our actions. Be harmonious with our fellow mankind. Live in a righteous way where we have morals and ethics and values, where we're not trying to destroy each other. Or we've taken the jealous bone out of this because everybody gets. The bad news for the bad people is they all get to go to jail. And so but talk about the, the jubilee. Great for the good people. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and the jubilee course, is what? Winifred, of course the bad people don't want this. Of course the people with all the money don't want this. Why? Because it frees up the people. Why would they want that? They've got such a beautiful thing where everybody's striving and fighting and have all this jealousy in their minds. We remove all that out of society. And then you're left with what? You're left with rule one and rule same, harmony. Yeah, harmony. I, I can't wait for the day of harmony. So may this series contribute to that vision of harmony and moving forward and, and taking someone's brilliant concepts and moving them into the the venue of the theater for consideration and then for people to learn from it and and digest it that's what yeah, i'm hoping yeah. from this if you look at the construct of my bank charters 
my bank charters are written up under this and I give everybody the three strike rule. Once it's three strike, you're locked into your own isotope, right? And then it's over for you. So it's, so it's a whole different, but you have to give people the benefit to stop and correct. You have to give people the count, the, the chance to own up, to stop and correct once they have knowledge and comprehension to change, to, to give everybody the chance. And, and I, it comes back to the old, to my saying, what did we do or what did I do with my own thought consciousness to bring me to, to dock me on the, in this vessel? Well, I did nothing. So it's a gift. So I'm the same as everyone. I'm no better. I'm no worse. I just created a, a paradigm that brings the culpability back to where it belongs with the people. And if downsizing everywhere and creating for the bad person, they won't ever want my system in place. Yeah. Because you can't hide behind a fiction oath. Because you take a, your oath is in the correctness. So you have to look at the, the preposition, preposition sets the fact on the performance. So now you can look at the verb of thinking. So you can ask the, the questions on why was the thinking done? To create harm to our fellow mankind? Oh, okay. You're out of here. We don't want you around. How yeah. nice buddy. And who determines if it was harmful intention or not? That's the key because you could, some people could argue and say, and ac actually, I got to tell you this. I had that argument <laughs> with the, the, one of the famous actors um, for the X-Files. And he came and sat down at me at the end of a table having coffee. And he heard my conversation about vaccines. And I was, I was covering the vaxxed movie. For this show and he had a fit and he kind of came after me and he said that's irresponsible people need vaccines you're harming everybody by not having a vaccine i said do you know what's in them i said what about the viral loads what about the load of vaccines that are being carried forward right now so we went back and forth and back and forth it's not that a vaccine is bad it's that what they're doing to force people into having to have them at the load that they're making them and he's, he was saying that's just that's irresponsible on your part. So then, therefore, who would come along and say in your system which one of those points of view is a valid point of view? Well, you have to you have to look at, at the communion and the chain of custody on who created the vaccine and what did they put in it and what is the outcome on the outsource on the back end of this thing? Does it cause cause autism does it cause cancer does it does that make you susceptible for long-term or short-term um, um, causalities that create a consequence of burden upon the people and so you have to really take a look at that and there, there needs to be um, and that goes into the disqualification of the world health and the cdc the central uh, disease control in atlanta and so they're, they're very aware of this the problem is is there the because of what can be done with harmonics now, you don't need vaccines. Agreed. We're going to a place in the future, uh, a very near future, of much better um, yeah. the, the, light the, and sound healing. The day of the doctor's over. It's just that, you know, because of the technologies here, there's just too much red tape because there's too many. Well, this is where the bringing in the quantum, the con quantum construct does the downsizing so all the red tape isn't there to now implement the concepts and then now we're back into the 5g question again we are and on that note we have to take a quick break we're going to jump right back in stay tuned this is a very moving conversation we'll be back with more and we're going to find out what russell thinks about the un currently and some other things when we come back stay tuned we're back you're listening to making life brighter radio and we're continuing our conversations in consciousness here with commander-in-chief russell hyphen and jay colin gould and before we went to break, you were about to say something else regarding the day of the doctor ending due to upcoming technology. So please expand on that. Yes, and so we're talking about the, the harmony of balancing the, the vessel through the chemistry of, of harmonics and some of the things that are in place here. And so it's, instead of having doctors, you're, you're gonna have balancers someone that can balance and make sure that one part of your your ph in your body is one way and so a lot of this it, it deals with you know the food that we intake and so correcting that simultaneously is a huge undertow 
Uh, but you, you have to really put a lot of these people that are in position, these big pharmaceutical companies that benefit from the unbalanced chemistry in our pH in our bodies that, that creates, that, that, you know, creates the, the harm towards us on a long-term insurance policy function. Mm -hmm. So we need to move those guys out of the way. My system will move them out of the way because they will be countable for what they give us. And, and so then, that we could, we could only ask for that as a, as a, you know, I, I ask that if I'm going to intake food, I'm trying to take the food that is best to create the best consequence on a short term and a long time to maximize energy and yet still give me the nutritional supplement that I need so that I don't get sick or we don't get sick on a long term or short term basis. Absolutely. Thank you for, for answering that. Now I'm going to jump in with something a little different because Lately in the news, we've heard an awful lot about the UN and many of these shows have centered around your performance at the UN and taking back the, the flag and filing in the Title IV flag at the UN and also uh, having them recognize your position and then taking the next steps to reauthorize banking systems according to your system around the world and being the postmaster general and the federal court judge, etc. So. I want to go back to the UN today. It's in the news. They said that it would be going bankrupt soon. What's really going on at the UN right now? What is happening over there? What's, what's taking place and what do people need to understand that they don't know about the UN? There's no funding for them. The, the day of the free funding where your paper just goes on and on and on, those days are gone. With my system in place, the system is backed by commodity to commodity. So your paper um, basically has to have something behind it. And the authorization for banking has to be there. I'm not about to authorize a united past tense adjective, nations as a pronoun, to implement and put spires on their flag standards and engage against war against their people and hide behind the, the auspices of peace. Not about to let that happen on this planet. So their days of banking, their days of authorization ended a long time ago because they never had authorization with the correct charter. They never had authorization to move contract from point A to point B from nation to nation because I took down the Universal Postal Union, which is their file stamp authorization for their construct. And those days for that authorization for their file stamps are over, which means their credentialing is gone. So the United Nations will end and it will be up to the nation to be in bilateral contracts from nation to nation to be countable for their for their for their cargoes that they move amongst each other. Now if that's said, how is it that this organization could have authorized the Title IV flag with you to begin with? They didn't, I did. I they didn't see. have authorization to do it. I did it. They didn't have authorization to exist. When I so you just went there and filed it in with them. Now, is that technically filing it with a fictitious system or filing it? Well, I'd never put their file stamps on my contract because it was fiction. I just handed it to them. I knew the tricks and traps of the continuance of the evidence, and I did not traverse into that. But they recognized you for what yeah, you they met did. With me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I'm correct. And so now as, as people go forward, as, as the world goes forward, um, I know that I watched um, President Trump speak the other day about the UN on live TV and he was entertaining a uh, the president from Italy, actually. And they're doing commerce with Italy and, and working through some things, but they were also praising the UN how do you feel about President Trump and what he's doing in office today? What, what do you notice about what's going on and what would you hope to see as things move forward? Well, we wanna see the benefits come to the people, of course. And the second thing is, you know, you gotta remember from where I'm witnessing from his position, he's coming into a century of negativity 
where a plan was put in place to harness and harvest the citizens of planet Earth and this country, where they've outsourced all of our capacity to create means for um, healthy foods for ourselves, healthy crops for ourselves, all the Roundup and the things that they they put on our on our on our on our on our crops. So that so he's in the middle of a huge, nasty function. And then to top it all off, in 1999, the authorization to do anything because David and I had taken the flag, the authorization to create commerce, tariffs, ports, move militaries, create banks, create money. He didn't have any of that. So does he know I, that? Under Title 42, 1986, if he doesn't have knowledge, he doesn't he doesn't have to be, to be culpable. So they key, his handlers keep him away from me. The people handling Trump keep him away from me, and they're running their own playbook, and 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 that all is based on uh, what their 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 war machines and what they're trying to do with the uh, the Eastern question and the things there. I don't want to get into that on the show because that's between Mr. Trump and his handlers and me to talk. Understood. Will you ever sit down to talk with him? I don't know. I don't know. Do you want to? Uh, if it would benefit the people, the, he, the benefit the benefit would be for the people, for well, sure, he, and, and it'd be a huge benefit for him because he doesn't know what he doesn't know. I see, and that's I unfortunate see. for him. So it's closure for him at that point. And when we were on the Rex Bear show, and all of us were together here um, on that show, I, I said we were able to see that email that came in from the White House to you for you to see regarding the new quantum banking consideration. I don't know what they called it now, I can't remember, but the appointed 22 folks that were signed off by Trump to now consider new ways of commerce and, and as the world changes, therefore they must take into consideration what may be changing. That wasn't authorized by you. No, but it came no, in. I, I, I would say I would syntax that and I would say, but I would love to sit down and share concepts in correct community because I'm the builder of the quantum banking system. So I can authorize specific functions that will benefit the people. And that's really what it's about because you know what? I have friends too. I like my friends. I like my family. I, I see what they're uh, the yoke that the, we're all under and I don't like it. So I did something about it. And I stopped and corrected, and I learned what I learned. And it does benefit the people of this country and the people of planet Earth. So with that in mind, I would like to sit down with Mr. Trump and share concepts with him that will help the guy who lives down the road from me, right? Well, it depends on if he would be willing to sit down with you. And does he know who you are? Never had a conversation with him. I have no firsthand knowledge of any of that. <laughs> My documentation has been sent into the location of the white hyphen house. They do have credentialing on me. Um, but as far as, see everything he has to deal with is fake, right? Congress didn't reauthorize in 1999, so they don't have any authorization. And I shut them down in the court marshalling of, of Bush and Cheney. So Congress has zero authorization to do anything. So is it, you know he's in the middle of a of a real bad scenario, but I could make life real easy for him with a couple hours of a conversation. Well, I hope that he'll consider and hear. I hope that somebody would let him hear that that invitation and take you up on on that ability to get closure and clarity. That's if, if people really want it. But that goes back to the volition of thinking. What do they really want? And who wants what? Yeah, that's it. And this, the, the conversation would be beneficial, not only for Mr. Trump, because he would learn things that he doesn't know about. And of course, I would, you know, it's a big mutual thing, but simultaneously, the big winners here would be the people. Because we have to be able to, to, un, to give the creativity back to the people so that we can create solutions for the government to be witnesses of mm -hmm. and to now force to allow them to commune with what the people bring forward 
to build benefit our fellow mankind. Well, people need to get over the idea, and which we've talked about several times already on this series, that there are no political parties debating. That's all just kind of a sham. There's actually yeah, like, nothing happening there. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually syntax uh, David Ivan Winkola Miller and Russell Ivan J. Colin Gould. We syntax the guidelines for the statement of candidacy for all presidents for the Federal Elections Commission and disqualified the United States Federal Elections Commission, as well as every law for all 50 states, as well as territories for the uh, Senate electoral college vote mechanics. Yeah. So all presidential elections are, are disqualified and it's all fake. And people are going to say, well, then why is it still happening? Why is it not cleared up? Because the people are, don't have the knowledge of when and how to bring me forward to give closure to the citizens as well as those that are trying to run for a position. On that note, we'll find out how to do that when we come back. You're listening to Making Life Brighter Radio, and please go to makinglifebrighter.com for the radio page for any outtakes, as we have the entire series with Russell hyphen J. Cohen Gould for you to listen to and to share with other people. And so you can spread the word about the performances that Russell has undertaken for the benefit of the people worldwide. Did you know that he has over 80 treaties with countries around the world? He's already gone around the world and spoken with leaders of different countries. He's done his due diligence at the Vatican and at the Pentagon and with the State Department even. He has created a federal serve system that took down the Federal Reserve System. And all of that is for you to investigate in the archives of these shows. So please go there. But I wanna continue the show that we're doing today with some more uh, comments and questions, Russell, about um, your performances and some of the things the listeners around the world are saying. Now, I'd just like to say, we have had an astronomical sum of people listen to these shows. People are coming from all over the globe, tuning in from remote countries to the Middle East, to Russia, to China, to South Africa, to Italy, to Turkey, and all over the UK, Ireland. You have a big following in Ireland. There's a lot of what, people tuning in there. What about the Vatican? Are they listening to? <laughs> well, they probably are. Somebody's listening because it flares up like, like you know, you touched a nerve. And the, remember the, the game operation? You'd reach in, zzz, and you touched a yeah. nerve. Well, I think we've touched a nerve somewhere in this show. <laughs> well, honesty tends to do that. <laughs> it does tend to do that. And so I just want to make a statement first. The lady that asked the question earlier, Beverly, um, she wrote and said, I truly believe these men, she was referring to you and David hyphen Win Colin Miller, but in speaking about you today, doing your performances, she said, I truly believe that these men are correct in what they're doing. And I certainly commend them for their pathway in helping humanity. And I thought you'd like to hear that. Well, dear, um, that that's really what it's about. It's look, I have friends out here. They don't comprehend me, but I feel for them. I know what they're going through. I know their daily grind. I know the hustle that they have to be in, be in just to make things meet. And it just doesn't have to be. And, you know, with that being said, if it doesn't have to be, then I get to spend more time with them. Right. And I get to grow as a person because I get to learn and share situations in life with them. But because they're wrapped up so day to day in the daily grind, I don't get to, I don't get as much freedom to be with my friends and to be with my loved ones. So it's in my family. So it's, it's, that's really what this is all about. It has really little to do with me. It's about, man, how can I be with my friends and my family, my loved ones? And, 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 and looking at this is a, a chance to create accountability to allow that to happen. Well said, well said. So, um, Caesar from Australia would like to know, in your studies, it appears that you've studied all the Freemasonry over time and wants to know if you yourself are one. No, I am not a Mason. And you got to remember, that's, that's a pretty new fraternity on the planet. What, 200, 400 years old? Not very old. A lot of plagiarism in their concepts. A lot of, you know... Uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You share with me, I'll share with you. As you get further up in their in their in their dogmas, you'll you you know what I'm talking about. 
and a lot of plagiarism coming out of Egyptian mythology, uh, a lot of stuff coming out of uh, Sumer and the Sumerians. So it's just, was it an interesting, it was a, what is it, a good study? It was a study. Is it something that, uh, that I believe in? Absolutely not, because I know that it's just so new. And as you studied it, you, you understood how that then was applied to, say, governmental constructs or the functions of government that now control our world. Would that be correct? It, yes, and what it also did, it was, it was, an, it was a door opener. The, some of those things are door openers. As you move into location, you can do certain things that will open the door for you. So, okay, very good. Um, Carrie, again from Australia, um, would like to know also um, how someone would go about learning the Parse syntax grammar and is there a support system to that for the world? Yes, there is. Uh, there's several study groups that do a very fine job. They hold, hold weekly syntax meetings to teach people the fundamentals of syntaxing. Um, you could go, there's a couple websites, if you, you mind if I give that Go ahead, up. please, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could go to fortheredthumbclub.com and there you can get syntax lessons. You can also get syntax lessons at uh, an email for the treaty at quantum hyphen bank dot world and you can get uh you can get um lessons there as well as well as other contracts uh dealing with claims of the life you can get at both locations and and postage stamps contracts and and some of those things that people uh, should consider as we navigate through this martial law war zone that was created to capture planet earth and capture and harvest the citizens of planet earth so some of the concepts there they have some of my contracts that allow the liberty and the freedom I should say freedom the freedom of the travel during times of a war and teaches the neutrality on how to keep yourself on a neutral position in the in the space okay jacks from oregon Hey, dude, how do you make money? Well, I, I, I manufacture my <laughs> own. My, I got into the world of finance, and with my banking system, I have uh, value for value, so that, that there's actual tangible value. And so I, I'm in the world of, I have, you know, as you guys have learned from me, I have my own periodic tables. So I'm big in the mono mono hyphen tomics and the periodic hyphen tables of, of manufacturing my own precious metals. and. I do that and so you make uh precious metals and then what do you do with them how do you how do you make uh, money that you live li on? Li li liquidate them okay be so you use that and then you trade it back in for commerce in this or, system or, or or no i usually try to trade for services so i uh, my world is set up for trade for trade for trade on services so i'm trying to stay out of that system would that happen over time if if the system changed over would it always be a trade for system or would it be eventually another monetary system that's backed by gold or whatever it could be both it can be both right now because i have such a establishment of the people that i do business with for services they like my gold they like my platinum they like my whatever i'm making them and so they i have a i have a my word is good with the people that i do business with so it's that's where I'm at, but yes, it can go into a large monetary scope, but we have to, I have to get in and, and set up a few things so that the powers that are in position under the administrative mechanics of the banking only get so much on their services, servicing fees. And that, there again, I'm back into the downsizing, downsizing again. So okay, that's last point. quick question. Um, Carol from Indiana, Carol would like to know, if you believe in God. Yes, I do believe in God. Uh, I am, you know, I, I believe, you know, I do, you know, but I'm not going to force my concepts, you know. Uh, how do you define a Christian? Well, 
I don't know, how can you, how can you define anything? You know someone by their works and how they treat other people. On and that so, note, we have to go. So thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you for joining us again. And uh, you all can stay tuned and you can look for another outtake with Russell-J. Colin Gould on makinglifebrighter.com on the radio page. Thank you so much for being with us again. And we have more to this series right here on Making Life Brighter. Thanks for having me.